freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. We're going to let her talk a little bit and then we're going to get through the rest of our speakers. Is everybody ready to have a great day? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Cheryl Todd. Good morning, Patriots! This is a phenomenal day, and any day that I get to have Jeff Knox introduce me is a pretty dang good day in my life. I am incredibly blessed to, to be friends with him and all of the speakers that will be coming up. And, uh, you know, we thought we were going to have to encourage everybody to come close for my uh, signature stage self felt selfie, but it looks like you guys are doing a good job anyway. So, on the count of three, let's give a big yeehaw for a selfie. Yeehaw! One, two, <laughs> Phoenix, you are gorgeous. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I am blessed to wear all the hats that both Tim and Jeff just uh, described to you. But in addition to that, I am a wife, I'm a mom, and I'm a grandma. And I just have to take a second and just say that my beautiful little family is right here in front. And my daughter, Cassie, and my son-in-law, Jason, are actually here today celebrating today their 10th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. So yes, I am all those things, a wife, a mom, a grandma, and I am a passionate supporter of our Second Amendment rights to keep arms and to bear arms. So let's talk about the Second Amendment. We have come here today to celebrate and protect. That is a beautiful sound. Oh my gosh, those roaring engines going by. We have come here today to celebrate and to protect this idea, this value, and this God-given right that we call the Second Amendment. Do you know that you and I have friends and neighbors who don't even know what the Second Amendment is? Thank you, they don't even know what the Constitution is. Do you also know that you and I have friends and neighbors who have made this this idea this value this god given right a political topic and therefore a divisive and a, a no-no topic that we can't even discuss in polite company well i am here today to set the record straight once again and as many times as i need to that the second amendment which was written into the Bill of Rights by our founding fathers as a firewall to protect us from the politicians' power over our lives is not a political issue. What it is, it is preciously and uniquely American and it belongs to every single American, not to a political party, not to a three-letter rights organization. It is yours individually, and it is mine, and it is our children's and our children's children's, unless, unless we allow the left and the right to continue to use it as a political Football, kicking it around, deflating it, and stuffing it into the footlocker of historical footnotes. Not on our watch. Not on our watch. My fellow patriots, as stewards of this inheritance of liberty, we 
must prevent the deflation of our rights from happening. We must push back on the rights deniers and the Bloomberg finance moms who demand some unnamed action. And we must demand education, not legislation. Say it with me. Education, not legislation. Education, not legislation. Well, our founders, you know what they promised us? They promised us one thing, and one thing only, that in order to preserve our legacy of freedom, it would require from us eternal vigilance. They knew that every single day, some tyrant somewhere would be trying to trick us with emotion or outright steal our children's futures. And in order to protect our children's futures from these snake oil salesmen of emotion-laden gun control, every one of us must be educated, informed, engaged, and we must vote. We must vote for public servants who will not just pay lip service, but actually defend the Constitution as though their lives and ours depend on it. In closing, I want to make the issue of voting very, very clear. It is not an event. It is a process of educating ourselves, understanding and knowing what the issues and who the candidates are, and voting for someone who will represent us in that office. So I, myself, I am a single issue voter. The Second Amendment, period. And here is why. The stance that a politician takes concerning the Second Amendment is very revealing and much more revealing than they would like us to realize. You see, wrapped up in that one issue are that politician's attitudes towards mine and your civil rights, personal rights, human rights, women's rights, and the rights of their minority and lower socioeconomic constituents. You see, those who are anti-gun are also anti-civil rights, anti-human rights, anti-personal rights, anti-women's rights, and anti-minority rights. They ask for my vote to expand their power to limit our liberty and freedom. And I say no. As for me and my house, I will always support the people who protect and defend our Bill of Rights, our Second Amendment, and our legacy of freedom, and who stand for education, not legislation. Education, not legislation. One more time, education, not legislation. Thank you, that's my time.